If you're curious about sublimation or looking to get into sublimation, this is the video for you. Today we're going to be doing a full tutorial on how to make a sublimation photo mug. Even if you don't have a sublimation printer yet, that's okay. This is going to be perfect for you to learn and to get started with sublimation. We're going to be doing this directly on Cricut Design Space, so you don't even have to learn a whole new software. It's really simple to do, so we're going to go through all of the steps of designing something like this directly on Cricut Design Space. We're going to use our sublimation printer, which I've shown you about. Don't worry, I have a whole playlist for you, so I'm not leaving you hanging. We're going to learn all about the sublimation printer, how it works, how to do it on a budget and save a lot of money. We're going to then cut it out on our Cricut. So it's super cool because if you're a Cricut crafter, sublimation works hand in hand with Cricut Design Space, your Cricut machine, and all of those amazing things to turn out with a beautiful sublimation project. And then we're going to be using our heat press. I have my mug press here. If you have the Cricut mug press, that's amazing. And we're going to be creating this. So I'm going to show you exactly all of the steps to create this so that you yourself can get started with sublimation as soon as possible. Alrighty, let's get into the tutorial. The first thing we need to do is grab our template, or what we're going to use as our mug wrap template. So what I like to do for my Cricut Design Space is go to the homepage. It will look a little bit different for you because this portion is recommended for you, but if you scroll through here until you get to the point where it says mugs, you can also scroll down on that homepage as well and you'll find it. And for me, I have it saved. So it's actually this mug design setup. So this is what I'm going to click on. I do not have the Cricut access. This is free for me to use. And then over here, you can select the size of your mug and then what type of wrap you're looking for. Are you looking for a straight edge? There are options. Okay, so what we're going to do is select the one we want, which this is the one I'm going to be using, and I'm going to click customize. If I'm able to link it in the video, I will link it down below just so you can very easily find it. So what we're going to do is look over at the layers panel. Right now you can see it's set to basic cut, which means that my Cricut is going to cut this out and think that that's what I want, and that's not the case. So what I'm going to do is change this all to be guide. So what you need to do is highlight over the portions that you want to change. We're going to go up to where it says operation select on that and then if you go down to the very bottom it says guide now it is all changed into a guide and we can move it around as is now i do want to show you something quickly before that right here the little mugs that you can see the pink here what that is showing is this part is going to be the portion you can see from the front of the mug the little picture above of the mug is showing you this is what you'll see from the handle on the left side and the right side. So you can see how the wrap is going to go and put your photos or your design accordingly depending on what you're wanting it to look like. So now that we have that all there, I'm going to put it back to guide like I showed you. And then we're ready to go ahead and make our design. So there are of course tons of ways that you can do this and tons of different formats and ways to set up these little boxes but what i'm going to do is i want to add one two three four photos onto here so i'm going to size them accordingly and we're just going to see how many i can fit in a row here in this little space which i believe this was the amount so yeah if i set it to 2.1 in width it's perfect and then for height, if I wanted to make it a little bit bigger, I could, but I do like the way that it is like this. Perfect, so that would fit perfectly the way that I have it. And then what I'm going to do here is also make these into a guide. Like I said, you can change the template and the format to look different. You could make a bunch of tiny squares for photos, you could make just one large one or a few small ones, but it's going to be the same process either way. So now I'm going to change this into guide also. We don't really need this many and you'll see why in a minute, but for now I'm just going to do it this way. Later on we'll worry about aligning them and all of that stuff. So the next step is adding in your photos. So go on over to upload at the bottom, upload image, browse, and because I'm filming on my computer, it's not going to show you my screen here in my file folder, but what I'm doing is I'm going through my downloads and selecting the photos that I've downloaded that I want to use. Now, one at a time, I'm going to have to do this, but we're going to select complex. 
continue apply and continue and now we're going to select print then cut image if you select cut image it's just going to be that big block rectangle which we don't want so go ahead and do that i'm going to change the name just for myself and upload now we're going to do the same process for all of the photos that we want and then i'll be back once i have all of those photos in here i have them all in my upload area what i'm going to do is highlight over the ones that i would like and select add to canvas once we bring it into our canvas it'll take a little bit to do you're going to see the photos are probably going to be quite large on our canvas so right away as you can see some of them are quite large I'm going to go ahead and select this lock button at the top which is going to make it so that I can just change it I normally just change it automatically to five make it smaller and easier to work with and I'm going to move these over to the side for now we're going to work with one at a time so let me move all of this over and out of the way there we go so the first thing we're going to do scroll a little bit so you can see what i'm doing we're going to take our guide that we created and put it over top of the photo so it's okay if it's in the background but the point is you can see the outline here let me bring this to the front so you can see this is the portion that we're trying to get. So what part of this do I want to cut? I think I want it about here. So now that it's over there, we're going to highlight over both of them. Make sure you only have two layers selected and click slice. Now that that's done, I can remove my guide, delete that one, remove the part I don't want and delete it. And then this little one is gonna fit right up in there. Now we can change this afterwards, but I'm going to go ahead and do this step for all of them. So just so that we can go over it again, make the photo a little bit larger. We're going to make sure it's two sides with the guide. We'll just move the guide to the front so you can see what I'm doing. And shrink it down a little bit. Perfect. So now we're going to highlight over both of them slice and then do the exact same thing we're going to remove these parts that we don't need and now we have this little piece and we're going to do the same step no matter what even if you're making a tiny little square here with the photo it's going to be the exact same method so that's why we did the guide and sized it to our template ahead of time so that i knew exactly what size i needed each of these to be now we're going to do the same thing here i'm going to make it a little bit larger and slice okay perfect and then we have this last one here we'll bring this to the front again just a lot easier to work with that way make it a little larger perfect slice and there we have it so that was a really easy way to do it now i'm going to set them up and lay them how i want so i'm going to change some of these oh i'm going to change some of these a little bit i'm just going to move everything down so we can see a little better so we're going to move this one over that just makes more sense to me then we're going to put this one here this one and then we have like that perfect so I have it lined up exactly how I want it to the next step is I'm going to go ahead and just hide this portion I'm going to make sure this is aligned where I want it to I do want a little bit left around it I think actually no it's okay we can just make it so there's no space in between perfect uh, there's a little bit of space there we're gonna highlight over all of them that are here go up to a line and a line to the top this is going to make it so it all is even on all ends because we did the exact same size for our little guide that we created in our template perfect so now that we have that back you can see here let me just move it a little bit over this fits still within our guide which is perfect and that's the wrap that we created so now that we're ready to do it what we need to do 
it's set to a print and cut image right now which is that's perfect but what i need to do is create it all into one flattened layer so what we're going to do is again hide the guy because we don't need it anymore now we know it fits i'm going to highlight over everything once it's aligned it's where i want it and i'm going to select flatten this combines it into one print and cut image and tells my printer and my Cricut, hey, this is exactly how we want it set up, all aligned here together, all in this exact way, and then cut out exactly around this. So otherwise it would have cut out each individual photo and that's not what I wanted for my specific one here. So now we're ready to go. Make sure your template is hidden. Go ahead and delete it if you need so that it's just your photos or your design. If you were also doing one, I'll actually show you one that I've done in the past. Let me just save this one. Um, let me go to my projects. I'll show you one that I made in the past. bring back the guide so you can kind of see so here's one that I've made in the past where the client or the here's one that I made in the past that the customer specifically asked for this little text in there and then all of the gray is where there's going to be photos so I did the exact same method and I put the photos in there obviously they didn't want a photo of me in there that was just me explaining how to do it earlier in that TikTok video and what I would do in the end is I've already done it in this one, but I'll just show you you would still highlight over everything even though there's text even though there's photos it's all mixed in I'm still going to highlight over everything and still select that flatten which is going to combine everything together into one print and cut for my sublimation printer and my Cricut to understand exactly what I want it to do so I just kind of wanted to show you that it doesn't matter if it's only photos or if it's text and photos and whatever it is I could even add some text across here. Let's say I want to write some nice little text. Let's see what font we want to do. Maybe a cute little cursive font. And um, it's kind of cute. Let's see if I can find a little cursive font that I want to add just so you can see what I'm talking I like the other font I think yeah we're gonna do it in white so just so you can see what I'm talking about if I were wanting to add this to it what I would do is highlight over all of it let me unflatten it first highlight over all of it and we're going to select flatten and it becomes part of the image so you can include text in there i can include little images or photos or whatever i want as long as i make sure i highlight over all of it and select flatten so that's a great way to do it as well let me just remove that portion if i do decide to add that i'll probably put it like a little bit just subtle across something uh, I'm actually not gonna add it in just because I think she would prefer it this way so we're gonna flatten it and now we're ready to go ahead and select make it perfect so it is a print and cut remember you can move it around if you need to if you are having issues with your Cricut print and cut still let me know in the comments I do have a video troubleshooting it and I will put that video right up here for you because it has helped a lot of people in that way. With sublimation, always make sure you mirror your image because later on we're not going to select HTV, so it's not going to remind us to mirror image. So mirror your image first for text and things like that. That's going to be very important. I'm going to select continue. The next thing I need to do is turn on my printer and my Cricut. So let's do that. I'm about to prepare my printer, but what I want to make sure we do is when we're sending it to printer, we need to have specific printer settings on. And some of them are up to personal preference. So the first thing I need to do is click here and change it to my sublimation printer. I have two printers, so I need to make sure it's on the correct one. If you want to learn how to turn your Epson printer like this into a sublimation printer, I did it for a really good price. 
So feel free to check out that video right up here that you see because it was really easy to do, I promise. The next thing is the settings. And I also have a video showing you how to do the settings, so I will also leave that right up here if you want to do the settings, and I'll leave it down below for you to watch it after. So I removed the bleed, personal preference, and I'm going to select print. Here is my sublimation paper. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. You need special paper for this. I like using the A sub sublimation paper. So there we go. Of course, there's going to be a front and a back side. So with your printer, just make sure you know which way to put it in. For my printer, I have to put it in just the way that it would face normally. So that's the way that I do it. I have my printer on this really good sturdy wire rack shelf from Walmart. They also have, I believe, a six tier one. It works really great. So I really like it. I hold both my printers on here and my sublimation things. Okay, that's perfect. So let's see. What happens? I was told that in the settings, sometimes it's better if you also slow it down a bit. So we'll see. Perfect. Okay. So the colors, I don't know how much I like the colors, but we'll see what happens. Okay. When you have a sublimation print at first, you might be a little alarmed. Why does it look so dull? Why does your printer look like it's running out of ink? What's going on? I promise this is normal. So the ink comes out really dull when it comes out of the printer. When it's activated with heat, so your heat press, your mug press, whatever you're using, the ink is going to come out more vibrant. So this is why you want to use the proper blanks. If you're doing a shirt or a garment, look for polyester. That's going to make the colors pop and be more vibrant. The blanks that we're using today, I will show you. It is a sublimation mug. It's geared specifically for sublimation. And that's going to make sure that this photo comes out very vibrant. You'll see the sunflowers will pop. And we're going to see if these colors come out okay. I did play around with my settings recently. So we're going to see. This picture I'm a little nervous about because it has a filter on it already. So not too sure how we're going to like if it comes out. But we're going to go for it anyways and see. You could absolutely put this in your Cricut and have your Cricut cut it out. So let's do that. We're going to let it dry for a minute and then we're going to do that. Perfect, so we are going to cut this out on our Cricut. You can also cut it out with scissors. Try to get it as straight as possible because you want it to line up with your mug. Also make sure not to get these black registration marks on your cut because this will transfer. This is made with the sublimation ink so the black outline will transfer if you don't cut it off. So I'm going to hope that my Cricut does a good job at cutting it out. We'll see what happens. And if not, we'll just cut it with my little paper cutter that I have. Make sure it's on there really good. Perfect. We're going to load up our Cricut. So this is going to be similar to print and cut. Actually, in fact, it is print and cut is if you're making stickers and things like that. So I'm going to cut it out, see if it recognizes the marks because it is a little dull. Wonderful. So it cut perfectly. It made sure not to get in the registration marks, which I love. I can turn off my Cricut. Let me just peel up my design. So here is our sublimation print. Now this paper, is garbage we can't really do much with it so I'm going to throw that out here we have our sublimation blanks so i got this off of amazon there's my hair in there because i've already opened this up i got this off of amazon i will try to link it as well down below if i can find it i love how it comes with the boxes it also comes nice and wrapped Make sure it doesn't get dusty and dirty and these are actually the 11 ounce mugs they were advertised as but i did use a 12 ounce wrap so the next step is to make sure it's lined up perfectly yes it size is good and then i also have heat tape there are tons of options this is the cricut infusible ink uh, heat tape you can use that you can use ones off of Amazon I also have those and what you want to do is 
Of course, the part with the image is going to go against the mug, right? So the back side is facing out. We're going to wrap it around as tight as we can. So what I like to do, turn it like this so you can see. I'm going to fit it because remember our template left for room here. It allowed for room here because when we press the mug, the handle is going to be in the way. So we can't do a full wrap because of the handle and this part about, I would say half an inch on either side will stick out. So we need it to be like this. I'm going to align it as flat as I can and then take a little bit of tape. This isn't any old tape. This is heat tape, so it's, the other one would just melt. <laughs> this is specific for these types of crafts. Then this part, you want to make sure you pull it as tight as you can and make sure that it's still flat and even at the bottom so that the print isn't, or the design isn't all wonky. Tape it down. Now this next part, looks super wasteful and I 100% know what you mean if you're sitting there thinking Shay you're wasting with sublimation you want to make sure it's on there really good really snug because if not then that part of the design won't sublimate and then the rest of the design will so you'll have a half sublimated design and it's kind of like infusible ink it will look a little wonky so if you want to get a proper design which means less waste in the long run because you're not having to reprint cut use all that stuff over and over you want to make sure it's on there really well sometimes experienced crafters um especially with sublimation and things they will just kind of like do it quick this is how i like to do it you do what you like but i like to do this on the top and the bottom pushing it against as tight as i possibly can and sticking it on there this also makes it so that when I put this inside the mug press, it's not going to slide the design down or anything like that. We have this. Now the bottom you can see is still kind of sticking up a bit, so we're gonna do the same on the bottom. Better to do it right the first time than have to continuously redo it and repress it. I am getting a little nervous because it doesn't look like it's 100% flat on there, but We'll see, and hey, you know I like to leave my mistakes in my videos so that you learn from them. And if you somehow end up making the same mistake as me, that's okay, because I'm going to show you what we can do to fix it in the future. Get the tape really good on there. Make sure everything is held down. Here's what it's going to look like. I have it all taped up and ready to press. I'm going to head on over to turn on my heat press and then show you how I'm going to do that portion of this. Here is my mug press. You could use the Cricut mug press. This is my five in one heat press, so I changed it to the mug press settings. I'm going to turn it on. Now, this temp and time and everything might look different depending on the craft. We're going to check set. So I have it set, it's going to go to 400. So we're gonna let it heat up now. I like to add some parchment paper around it to protect my heat press from the sublimation ink in case it kind of bleeds through. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. I just do a little tape. Okay, so now that it's on there and my heat press is ready to go, I'm going to slowly and carefully, without ooh, burning myself like I almost just did, put this inside where I want it and we're going to clamp it down. So now I'm going to start my time for my press, let it go and we'll be back once it's done. It's time to take it out, so we're going to lift it, carefully remove it. You want to let this cool down because it's going to be very hot. So as you can see here, the sublimation ink did go through a little bit, which is why we put parchment paper to protect the heat press. And I can see that the colors are pretty vibrant underneath compared to what it looked like before, so I'm excited to peel it up once it cools down a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna start peeling it up a little bit. It's still pretty hot, but I'm just super curious. So we're gonna start pulling away the tape. Some people get specific heat gloves, which is a really good idea because it's super hot. Ah, it's hot. So I'm going to pull it up and we'll reveal what it looks like. Some of these pieces are just like too hot to even. I don't know, I feel like this is very common in the sublimation world where we are too eager to see the design 
and we don't want to wait. Girl, I'm so excited. It looks so good. We have a little bit of the design peeking through as I attempt to not burn myself. And it's so cute so far. I'm so excited to see the full thing. It's just too hot to peel away the rest yet. Ah! Okay, it's a little duller on the sides. That's okay. My press is a little wonky, so I have to tighten it more is what that tells me. Now, I think because these are the 11 ounce mugs, the wrap I was using was for 12 ounce, so it is a little bit larger, which means it's going to be the heat press can't go all the way around it, essentially is what I'm saying. So it's hard for my press to get where the end of the design. So I guess if I left a little bit less space. So this is the mug. I'm going to turn it a little bit. This one's kind of tricky because it had a filter on it from the internet. But this is what it came out like. It looks so good. Like I said, the end is a little bit faded, but that's okay. The little corner could have taped it down a little bit better. And I'm glad I did that because now you can see, but now you can see the color comes out so much more vibrant than it did when it comes out of the printer. This cup is permanent. We can throw it in the dishwasher. You know, you don't have to worry about it peeling up like vinyl that overlays because the ink transfers into the material. So it's in there now. It's good. Like, there's nothing on here. It just became part of the mug, which is really cool. Imagine a Christmas gift like this. How incredible. Have the finished product i love it so much now you see a little bit of why it's so important to put so much tape and i should have just put it a little bit tighter and made my wrap a little bit smaller for the specific mug but that's okay you live and you learn and honestly i don't mind the look of it i think it's super cute also try to avoid filtered photos really hard to work with those colors but hey it ended up working out so what do you think is this something that you'd be interested in trying out or do you have a sublimation printer or are you thinking about it let us know in the comments down below and I will see you all in the next one. Happy crafting, bye for now.